Welcome back to the Castle Grounds Lab. I almost said apiary. Welcome back to the Castle Grounds Lab, where we are making our lightweight bee bump concrete hive using rapid set cementol, sometimes referred to as CSA, and Vigoro perlite, and just regular sand. Using this system, you need two entire bags of this two cubic foot yeah, per life. You need two entire bags of the 55 pound CSA rapid set cementol. And you need one 50 pound bag of regular sand, play sand, uh, medium grade construction sand, whatever. So, my mixer can only do three and a half cubic feet at a time. So I'm going to do one bag of cement, one bag of perlite, sorry, and half a bag of sand. We'll mix it up and we'll do this in two, two batches. So I've already got one half of it mixed in this container. I'll put some water in, I'll start shoveling this in, and we'll dump and go. I apologize for the Nest camera footage, but my hands are filthy. My phone's won't quit going off, and I've got to make this quick, so hopefully you can see everything I'm doing here. Don't know exactly how much water it takes. This is my second time to do this, so that's how I know the recipe already. It was trial and error the first time, and I wanted to get it down before I kind of told you guys what to expect. Um, I just splash water in there until it feels right, all I can say. First half is done. It's a little drier than I like. I don't even know if you can see what's happening here. A little drier than I like. The mix didn't get settled in all the nooks and crannies like I want it to. So I'm going to make the next batch a little moister. I know the drier the better. And this one would be the most important one. But yeah. Also, we'll fill up the, the base and the two uh, hive, or the two frame boxes first. Because those need a minimum amount of, of concrete. The lid, it doesn't really matter so much. You can make it four inches thick or two inches thick. So I'm just going to make sure I get the other three sections full. And then dump what I got left in the lid. Because this, this mix, this recipe is razor thin on having enough. So.
So this one came out a little strange. The perlite makes it look like I've got cottage cheese everywhere and not the good kind. Um, it's not perfectly flat, like it's very bumpy. It's almost like popcorn ceiling kind of texture. Um, so I don't know how that's going to sit. It is still fairly heavy. If you saw the first video where we did the uh, just regular concrete, which would be a, just not lightweight concrete, but regular construction grade concrete, uh, that hive, the base, the two boxes, and the lid ended up being almost 500 pounds. And it looked really good. And it's very solid, but not really practical. This hive with the same pieces, I think, will be right around 280 pounds. So almost half the weight. Still heavy, but manageable for one person. Now the bottom is the bottom isn't light. Um, but if, if, you know, you don't really need to move the bottom much, you can have help setting it in place and then you really only need to be able to move the other three sections, which are significantly lighter. This is the second lightweight casting I've done. The first one I didn't put on video because honestly, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. And I didn't want to make a video for no reason. So it actually turned out pretty good. I'm a little worried about this one because I don't know if I got it packed well here in the sides. I'm afraid it's going to be really loose and falling apart and kind of crumbly, honestly. Uh, but we'll see. If it is, I might be able to fix it with like some cement repair patching stuff. Now we're just going to flip it over. <laughs> I hope the table holds. Okay, so I usually do this right on the ground, but this is definitely easier than the back. Looks like my fears are confirmed, but not where I expected. So I didn't get it packed down here as much as I wanted, but I really tried hard to get my fingers in there and wedge it in. When I didn't do good enough, the entrance. So this should actually be completely closed. I did not get enough material packed in here and it's because I mixed it a little drier and I just had a problem getting it didn't have the fluidity to fill the, all the nooks and crannies I had to do it by hand and I just obviously failed um, but you can see it actually looks okay that's not good 
And that's not great, but probably usable. So I'll continue to unpack. I mean, that doesn't look bad. I'm still kind of fine tuning my process, but we're getting there. A few more little tweaks to the recipe and process. And probably what I'll do here, and maybe I should do it now. Maybe I should tip this up, leave that mold in there, and pack something in there. I don't know. We'll keep going. Okay, so it needs a little bit of work, but you know, it might it might still get the job done. We're gonna go ahead and roll this over and pull out the side pieces and the back. I guess the front, maybe. Yeah, this stuff is falling apart. just what was inside. I thought it fell apart on me. This lit that I was worried about is actually better than on my first casting. Same over here. On this side it's a little chalky and a little crumbly. I think what happens is where the mold where the mold meets these little uh, I don't know what you call these these little cavity pieces I think when my concrete or my mix gets in here, the water seeps out of my aggregate and gets pulled between these cracks and then it actually sucks the moisture out of the mix, leaving nothing but the dry, crumbly perlite stuff to kind of rest against that side. And so it's just not as good there. I bet if I sealed that up better, we'd have better results. in there pretty good. I'm going to leave the front end for now. That way I can come back and backfill that with some other material. These, these have been under plastic for almost eight days. Okay. So here's how I stack the boxes, the frame boxes, is with these wood slats and clamps on the end because the top piece it gives you, you really need this top piece to create a recess and that, that allows the pieces to interlock and if you don't have this compressed well, which it doesn't do well on its own, uh, you won't kind of get that interlocking fit. So this was an easy way to achieve that. And it's still not perfect, but it's better than, better than nothing. Okay, so not perfect again. Nothing I do is.
these have been the easiest pieces to make. There's not much to them, but I haven't really screwed one up yet, except for when I don't get the uh, channel depressed just right. Let's see if I get this one right. Oh yeah, that actually locks in there good, which is what you want. Okay, not bad, not bad. If this table breaks, I'm gonna be mad. All right, next one. Yikes. Looks like this is the one I was running out of material on. The batch that I made is just a tiny bit short on material. I wish I had about 10% more. But when you're working out of, you know, bags, you know, it's, it's hard to just tweak it just a little bit because you need a whole entire other bag. And this is already expensive. This might be okay. This bottom edge, even though it's not all the way flush, is not as important as the top edge and the little depression we make. Tell I was running out of out of the goods on this one. Not as compact, significantly more porous. Uh, but let's see how it fits. on there. You can tell, sorry the lighting's not great here, you can see where it's not as, didn't get the compression here that we have here. I made this one first and this one, I had to scrape stuff off the ground to fill this one up. So this one probably won't be as strong. Curious if it will be as durable. But we're not going to move these much. These are going to be our tests, our experiment hives anyway, so they don't have to be perfect. You could even take like a, like when you do stucco, you put a, a scratch coat or a brown coat on and you go over it and you can texture it. You can make these look really nice if you wanted to. And I may do that. I don't know yet. And lastly, the lid. I don't, I don't love the lid. I want to love the lid. I think the lid has potential. I think it's more operator error than anything because by the time I get to the lid, I'm out of material, I'm out of patience, my hands are filthy, I'm stepping in muck, and running out of material always is a pain. You just want to get as much in there as you can. So it's not flat, it's not smooth, it doesn't look great. It looks like a popcorn ceiling, which Nobody likes. The concrete hive didn't have that problem. Ugh, yeah, this one's hideous. The underside is nice though, at least usually. But this, this one usually pops right out. popcorn on the outside, which is fine, doesn't really matter, but on the inside, it's very nice. This allows it to grab on and interlock, 
nice and smooth. And depending on how you cure these, what's neat about the concrete hives, hives, and if you know anything about concrete, they can actually absorb moisture, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. You don't want the hive to wick moisture out of the air from the outside and pull it in or uh, from the rain. You want that to, we want to seal the outside, but the inside can actually draw humidity out of the hive, which is good. So I think what we'll do is we'll cure the outside and seal it really well and try to leave the inside somewhat untreated and porous so that it absorbs more moisture. can't see that worth a crap, can you? All right, so that's it. I'm gonna take this outside, put it back under the cover. Let it set up a little bit better. See, that looks like junk. I might put a level, surface leveling concrete material on top, we'll see. But that's it for now. So it's kind of a mess, and I know that. Uh, but it is good enough for our purposes. Our goal here is to test the durability, the convenience, the ease of use, the uh, insulative properties versus wood. And if every single thing is better, cost as well, then we will make more of these for our apiary expansion. So doesn't have to look pretty, we just need it to, to function for this next season. We'll have two of these set out, one as a control, one as an active hive. Same with the wood, all side by side, all monitored with temperature and humidity sensors. And we'll see what works, we'll see which one makes the most honey, which bees seem to be the happiest. And that's the whole point of this system, and if we like it, then we'll get the costs down. I mentioned it being expensive, in it, and it is. but. Anytime you buy a single bag or a single item of anything from Lowe's or Home Depot, it's going to be expensive. But we can get these materials in bulk and get the cost way down, and it should be maintenance free and last forever. So this will probably never be as cheap as a as a wooden hive, uh, but you should only have to build it, make it, paint it, treat it one time, which I like. So thanks for watching. I'll keep you updated.